Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk. Um, this is implementing the Steamworks SDK in the Unity. And uh, we can just get started right away. So for the introduction, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Chris Figueroa. Um, I formerly worked at Activision. Um, I started my own company called Kanifi Games LLC. And for those of you who have been using Unity long enough, I used Unity since iOS was a separate application, which was not fun. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so I worked at Activision um, where I was did online QA. And then now I have a game called Imagine Me on Steam Early Access. And this is my game, Imagine Me. And then... So, uh, I'm Riley Lebrec. I've been a longtime game modder uh, as a hobby for around 15 years now. Uh, I started working on PC games professionally about two years ago. Uh, I was doing freelance work for Unity developers. And while working on Spectraball for Shorebound Studios, I had to create a plugin for Unity called Steamworks.net which allowed you to use Steamworks features from within Unity. Chris will cover what all that means in a bit, but before we start, we're kind of curious, uh, how many of you know what Steam is? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> how many people have a game on Steam? Okay, how many people are looking to put their game on Steam? Okay, how many people actually know what Steamworks SDK is? Perfect. Okay. So again, I'm just going to kind of go through some stuff just in case um, for some people that don't know everything because Steamworks SDK is quite large. Um, so uh, what is Steam? Steam is an, uh, an application that you can actually download applications and games on. Um, it also includes uh, like applications for you to make games and applications for you to record games and uh, it actually has a lot of stuff. Um, it's available on Windows, uh, Linux, and Mac, and also uh, the Steam OS, which is just a Linux distribution made by Valve. Um, they also have a mobile app that you can actually check sales on, and you can uh, actually chat with your friends on and stuff in case you're not at your computer, which is, actually comes awesome. So uh, There's also something called Steam Workshop where you can create and share content. And some games actually allow you to create and share content and sell it if it gets um, upvoted, but that's another story. So what is Steamworks? Uh, Steamworks is an API for your games. Um, it allows you to do achievements, uh, leaderboards, and stats. For those of you, um, achievements are pretty obvious. You, you can set a rule, essentially, in your code and then get an achievement, leaderboards, or high scores and stuff. Stats is, uh, in Imagine Me, I have stats for um, like how many games you've played, how many games you've lost. Um, also, I have like a random stat that my community really loves of how many times Cat has interrupted the gameplay. You can only get it by mashing on the keyboard, stuff like that. So uh, they have user authentication and ownership, matchmaking, uh, user-created uh, content, so that deals with the workshop again. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer networking, uh, Steam Cloud. Steam Cloud allows you to essentially like write a file and do configuration stuff um, and save it to a Steam server, and then you can recall that stuff later. Uh, it has a ton more, and I strongly suggest that you guys actually um, look at everything because it's a it's very huge. Um, so the first thing is Steamworks is um, you actually don't need to do anything in order to get the Steam overlay for those of you that don't know. And this is something kind of new for people that um, <laughs> a lot of people think that they need the SDK to do this, and they really don't. Steam actually injects itself um, into your game, and you get this overlay by just pressing Shift-Tab. Um, and it, you can view your achievements, you can view the news from that game, you can also see your friends and talk with them, and you can hear notifications of your friends talking to you, and that's all done with nothing. You just have your game on Steam, and Steam will inject itself into there. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways in Unity to actually deal with the Steam SDK. Um, and I'm going to go through those. The first one is Community Express SDK. Um, that one has been used in games like Fez, um, Guncraft, and a bunch of other ones. Um, the most popular is Ludosity Steam Wrapper. It's on the Asset Store. Um, 
and that's made by Ludosity. They're a really popular um, game developer for Unity in general. Um, and then there's us, there's Steamworks.net, and then there's also the option of doing a custom wrapper. Um, and for those of you that don't know also, um, Steamworks, or Steamworks SDK is in, all in C++. So, and we're gonna go through the custom wrapper and essentially, so. Yeah, so uh, the problem with creating custom wrapper is, as you said, it's in C++. That doesn't work so well with Unity, obviously. Uh, it's very time consuming to get right. And there are many constraints and pitfalls when creating a wrapper. So one of the primary goals of Steamworks.net is to be as easy as possible to get started using it in your project uh, while maintaining the exact same API that Valve exposes. This helps uh, Steamworks.net stay up to date with Valve's latest code within one day of release. So. So let me tell you a little bit about Steamworks.net. Uh, Steamworks.net is um, our solution, essentially, to the problem of dealing with the Steamworks SDK in Unity. Um, and so Steamworks.net is open source. Um, it is designed to be as close as possible to the Steamworks SDK. Um, Valve's documentation largely covers the usage of Steamworks, so a lot of the work is explained for you, which is really nice, so there's no interpretation between how you should use it versus how it says you should use it. Um, and it, it's available for Windows, Mac, Linux, 32, and 64-bit, which uh, a lot of the wrappers do not support that, which um, I don't blame them, because maintaining something like this is really hard. <laughs> Um, I would know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, and then also, it was written by Riley, and um, he completely offers one-to-one -one support for everyone, and I can attest to that, so. <laughs> so what is the future of Steamworks.net? Oh, there's a number of things that I'm looking at doing. Uh, first, as we said, Steamworks.net exposes exactly the same API that C++ does. And that's not always the greatest in C-sharp and in Unity. So looking at higher level abstractions for all that stuff is really interesting and something that I definitely want to look at more. Uh, Steamworks.net is almost entirely auto uh, automatically generated. So it's pretty quick to support all the new features in Steam, whatever it comes out and everything like that. Uh, I'm working on the asset store release. I know it's something a lot of people want. There's some uh, biz dev stuff that has to go on, which uh, I'm not the best at, but I'm working on it. I'm talking to the guys downstairs about it. Um, documentation has always been the toughest part about Unity, or Steamworks on Unity. Uh, I know the Community Express SDK and Ludacity plugin They've had some challenges with documentation. Uh, Steamworks.net hasn't had the greatest documentation for a long time, but it's, it's getting better, it's getting better. I'm working on videos and stuff like that, and it's getting there. <laughs> and uh, actually, I'll show you. So we just actually did this for you guys. Um, so if you go to the GitHub page, steamworks.github.io, uh, you can actually see the documentation that uh, we've created for you, and it gives you everything that this uh, Steamworks SDK gives you, along with, if you go to the installation, and everything has here, it tells you what to do. It yeah, tells you so exactly. everything that we cover today is in this documentation, so you can just go there and get lot, lots of the talk. Um, so we'll, we'll only be covering the basics today. So this talk is called uh, How to Implement the Steam SDK into Unity, um, and I will show you that, but it's kind of a joke because we've made it so easy that um, it's really not that hard at all. So here we go. Uh, so we actually have a package now that we just made, which is great. So you can just uh, drag that in. You can download that from the GitHub or wherever, um, and you just import it. And give it a second, and it will tell you uh, 
the Steam API.txt um, is not present in the root, so it's going to copy it over. Um, and then also it's going to uh, successfully tell you that it copied it over. And it's going to ask you to um, restart Unity. And you just restart Unity. Hopefully it works. <laughs> and that's it. That's, that's it. There's no copying of DLLs. There's no nothing. It does it all for you. Um, and that is the majority of the problem with uh, Ludacity and Community Express and stuff is that a lot of them actually make you that. Make you copy yeah. DLLs over and update DLLs and, and Riley will actually show you that. Yeah, so uh, with the new Unity package, the Steam Manager, which is a basic implementation of Steam, is included right in the package now. And all you have to do, basically, is just whoops, copy it over onto pretty well any game object. Uh, I would prefer you use uh, an empty one, but it's good enough. And where's your Steam? Go this way. <laughs> In game, and you're in Space War. So you are on Steam now. And so it's super easy for you guys. We've made it really easy for you. Um, and yeah, I, this Space War is uh, Steam's default app for you guys to do yourself in. When you guys are actually get your own app ID, there's a in your root there's a Steam app ID.txt, and you just edit it for yours, and then it'll say you're in your own game. Yeah, and I should clarify when I say you're on Steam. You still need to go through Greenlight for now. I've heard there's changes coming, but uh, I don't have any info on that. Um, and yeah. Hold on, give me a second. OK, so why use Steamworks.net? Um, I think it was pretty obvious of what I just showed you. It was ridiculously easy to implement it. Um, and other rappers, they, they've worked. They've worked for now. And um, I can't blame them for a lot of the issues that people are reporting, because maintaining something, um, especially for public use, is really, it's a lot of work. Um, Ludosity is a game developer, and they make amazing games. So um, I don't really blame them that they like, are delayed in maintaining stuff. Um, and the other thing is, like, uh, like a lot of the bugs that you have, you have to send them an email and just you kind of play the email game for a while, which isn't fun. And um, for us, it's it's Riley and he's uh, doing this 100%. So um, there is no other thing. Um, and also, this sto talk is kind of a funny story because I searched the internet entirely for a wrapper for my game and I could not find one that I enjoyed. I tried the other ones and it didn't work. Um, and then I saw Riley's post on the <laughs> Um, the community page on Steam, and I downloaded it and used it, and I loved it. And then Unite came around, and I said, I'm submitting a talk for Steamworks.net. So it's kind of a testimony that me doing this talk actually proves that this is something that I believe in personally, that should it, everyone should be using it. It's so easy. Um, so what is the conclusion, actually? I want you guys to take away a couple of things here. Um, using the Steamworks SDK isn't difficult with a lot of these options, but obviously I'm telling you that Steamworks.net makes it even more easy. Um, more importantly, I want to make sure that you guys understand the Steam business model. This isn't something, for, especially for mobile devs, this isn't something that you just add on or like a lot of people just, just because you have all of these features doesn't mean you should. Um, for example, Imagine Me is working on, uh, it's already on early access, and we don't have all of these. We have achievements, we have stats, and right now I'm working on uh, user-generated content, so I can do, I have a level editor in our game, and then I'll do workshop support. And we're actually uh, putting that out, and then as a feature, we'll put it out and do an update. And uh, that's something new for mobile devs, that, like uh, Steam, you don't just put a game on Steam and then forget about it. It's it's, uh, it has a lifetime, and the lifetime is as much as you put into it, and you continually update it. So each feature, I strongly suggest for you to research. Like, look at Dota. Dota has its own community. Um, it has its own ecosystem because of the workshop feature in Steam SDK. Um, and I strongly suggest that you look at all of that. Um, as for grassroots marketing, it's it kind of 
it's really nice, especially for us, when um, we had some like few people buy our game and they would get achievements, and then on their profile it would show their stats. And when they would get an achievement, then their friend would see that they got the achievement, and then their friend would be like, "Oh." I see you're playing this game and you just got this achievement. I just looked at what it requires for you to get this achievement. That looks like it would be really hard. I want to try and do that. So then it kind of grows up. So it starts at one person and it branches and it branches. And uh, that's really cool. Um, that's something that I never thought would happen. And that's something that I strongly suggest you um, look at each feature and think about what to do with your game. Um, and then also, all these wrappers are either free or really, really low cost. Um, and that's something, I mean, they're do, Riley does the C++ and everything for you, so you can't really, uh, it's a lot of work. So, uh, and with all these options it prov provided, it'll take you up to five minutes to set up or less. Um, it took me one minute to do Steamworks. That's it. probably less. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. And then yeah, so uh, Steamworks.net is actually used in more than 100 shipping games just in the last six months alone. Unity is truly a force in desktop gaming, and I look forward to seeing what you guys all do in the future. So that's it for me. Thank you. And then actually, we wanted to make this as short as possible because it's the end of the day, but also we wanted you guys to ask questions because for a lot of people, uh, Steam is it's either a black box or it's really open. And it's some people, it varies on their information. So I, I, I want, if anyone has any questions for anything, feel free to ask right now. You can go. I, I noticed really quickly on the screen that you require Unity Pro in order the, the license version, not the free version. Um, is there a mechanical reason for that? Or what's yeah, so uh, Unity requires you to have the Pro license to use plugins. Uh, specifically like native plugins, and that's just a Unity limitation. Um, yeah. Can you uh, go into a little bit more detail about Steam Workshop integration into Steam.net? Yeah, um, for what basis? Like. So you mentioned that you have a level editor. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, and that the documentation covers that a lot, but I'll show you, I'll tell you about the process. So I made a in my game, imagine me, I have a level editor that's tile based, um, and you can just edit the level, add player, and do whatever. It's just a normal tile editor, um, and then I, after you're done, you just name it and press save locally, and then once it's saved locally, I would say upload to workshop, and when you upload the workshop, it writes it to the cloud. And then from there, I get a callback that says it's successful. And then um, I just iterate through all of the like levels that that user has done with, work with Workshop to make sure that they haven't uploaded one with the same name. If they have so, then I ask if they want to overwrite it. If not, then it just goes. And um, that's all in, I mean, I the Workshop I mean, Steam servers are ridiculously fast. So that <laughs> happens in like 30 seconds. So. Um, for me, that's that's really the workflow. I know that there's more for some people that want to do more, and you could probably go into that. But really, it's yeah. that simple. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of different use cases for the workshop. I know, like Team Fortress Two, you don't actually download anything from the workshop. It's all entirely content that's curated by Valve, and they pull from that and place it directly in the game. So you can use it kind of however you want. Really. Yeah, um, and there's also categories too, so um, which I didn't realize until after I was looking at the API. Like, there's an apparel category too because <laughs> Dota does um, like T-shirts and stuff, and then uh, you can also do like levels or characters or and there it's infinite possibilities of that. So, and uh, the category thing is um, just a it's just another call. So if you were doing like a certain like a contest for your level editor or something like that, you just set it. Yeah, I've heard of. People doing like great contests with that, and having like really driving yeah. their like grassroots marketing with their community, and yeah, it's great. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows Race of the Sun, yeah. uh, but Race of the Sun had uh, a level editor that they put out, and they used Steamworks.net, and they used the workshop right before PAX, and the winner actually got a ticket to PAX, and they got their level uh, at PAX, so um, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Stuff. I 
I assume you're generating like C++.net and marshaling code and stuff. Have you run into any kind of like performance pain points in that marshaling layer or instability stuff? Uh, Thankfully, no. You don't have to make too many calls to Steam too often. It's often not more than one a frame, so it's not a big deal. Uh, it's definitely something I kind of want to look at getting faster, but at the same time, it's it's one a frame at most, really. So, yeah. Uh, do you have an example app or anything that goes with this, just showing all the different Steam calls? That you yeah, so yeah. There's, there's actually two. Um, there's a basic st sample application, which is based off Valve's official application. And that just implements uh, stats and achievements in like a real industrial like strength way. And yeah, and that's what this is too, uh, and, that's on the screen. Yeah, so, and then, well, this is steamworks.net test, which tests everything out. Like you get to see exactly how to call every single function and like what it'll return and stuff like that. And I find that to be a big help with the uh, documentation in general. It's everything. So which is which? This one is the... The test is calling every single function. And then there's the example, which is, yeah. There the, you go. The example is just uh, stats. So it does <laughs> achievements and stats. It's not anything. It's just a more simpler um, explanation of it, so. Yeah. Anyone else? Is everyone good? <laughs> Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you.